Okay, hello everybody. Hello people out there in TV land. Um, I'm going to do a really quick talk on uh, the Open Hardware Diversity Alliance. It is an initiative with Western Digital, Chips Alliance, and Open Power Foundation that we launched uh, about a week ago. And it is formed to help improve diversity numbers, help provide programs for uh, you know, underrepresented individuals and women in um, open hardware. So th this idea really ca came out of Western Digital and from Marjan, who is the co-chair. So Marjan, if you're watching, thank you. The question we're trying to answer is why are there so many, why are there so few, pardon me, women and underrepresented individuals in open source hardware? Is it because it's hard to navigate? Is career pro progression a mystery? Is there a lack of visibility of talent? So as we envisioned this, we, we kept these questions in mind. So as I mentioned, we launched the Open Hardware Diversity Alliance about a week ago and um, with, with those four organizations. We, with our mission of bringing together those interested in open hardware, open source hardware projects to, and provide programs to help improve these diversity numbers and give encouragement to, to women and underrepresented people, actually everybody, because we are inclusive. We don't want to leave anybody out. Um, but to provide support and programs for, for people to feel more included and to want to choose hardware as a career. Um, we, uh, I just kind of went through this. How we're going to do it, we, we're looking at um, promoting, so looking at individuals, uh, and things they have done, making sure that it's promoted, help them promote themselves, look at encouraging them, you know, giving them tools and resources to encourage them to take that next step in their career growth, empowering, making them feel really confident, helping people feel confident about what they're doing, and then facilitating by bringing uh, individuals together to work together. So the way we structured this is we structured it with a leadership team uh, and we purposely launched this with just a few organizations uh, because we wanted to make sure we could get it launched. Uh, I, it, I've gotten a lot of support since launching of people that want to join. And just think about if you've ever been on a project and you have maybe 10, 12 organizations trying to get something launched. I'm not sure we ever would have decided on the, agreed on the colors for the PowerPoint template. So we purposely launched small, and we have a structure of two co-chairs and five advisory team members. Then we have what I'm calling streams, which will focus on a specific area uh, uh, so that, and that stream would then develop those activities. So I'm gonna try to put this up, and I do realize this one is hard to read. Uh, we have what we call organizational streams, so looking for somebody who wants to help with metrics, for example, or be the marketing lead and do some communications, who wants to work on alliances, find those other organizations that want to partner and we, where we want to do things together to support what they're doing and have them support what we are doing. Then I'm going to drop to the bottom. We have program streams. And these are programs that we're looking to offer out to the community. So a learn program on topics, uh, maybe um, how to join, a, you know, how to get involved in a work group or how to balance, um, you, you know, you, that you're that in between generation, how to balance your kids and taking care of elder parents, for example. But we're looking to be providing resources, gathering those resources and help provide them them out to the community. Uh, we have what we call a speak stream, and that one is designed to help give individuals the confidence and knowledge to maybe submit the CFP, prepare them to speak in front of people. So that one is specifically for people that are interested in, in speaking in public. We have the mentor stream, a typical mentor, allyship, uh, and sponsorship type programs. Um, and not sponsor like give me money, like spons get a sponsor in an organization to help advance in that organization. We have a talk stream, which is all about inclusive, uh, inclusive language, communications. You know, how can we be better at w what we are communicating out 
into the community to, get, to encourage more participation. We have the recognized stream. I mentioned that a little earlier, and that is to help uh, really elevate the accomplishments of individuals. And then empower, you know, anything that somebody needs to really help empower, have themselves feel empowered in the community. So we're, we're targeting uh, organizations, people who want to move up into the leadership area, contributors, and students. And they're all important. The three, are, the three after organizations are individuals. You know, we want to be targeting them for their individual goals. But then we also want to target individuals and provide tools back to them. Um, as I mentioned, we launched recently. We are, um, right now, it, this is our progress slide. We're adding organizations who want to join in this project. As I mentioned, I've had a, a bunch of them reach out. We are capturing individuals who want to participate and volunteer, either participate in the programs or volunteer. And we are promoting this alliance, trying to get the word out uh, at events such as this. We will be at Open Power Summit at the end of this month. Linux Foundation Member Summit in November, and risc V Summit in December. So um, my next steps, uh, we will be assigning stream leads, and, I will, and then kicking that off with those stream leads. And then we already have identified a webinar series, educational webinar series, that we will start that in January 2022. And as I had conversations this past week with people who wanted to volunteer, They've given me a lot of ideas of things that they want to get started on right away. So I want to make sure that we're not just launching this and it's something on paper, but that we're actually doing something. So we definitely have the webinar series going, but expect many more activities, tools, and resources. And with that, that's, that's all I have for today. Uh, if you have questions, you can email info at diversityhardware.org. You can go out to diversityhardware.org, hit the join button. I believe it takes you to a Google form. And then we're going to add you to a bunch of email lists and um, much more to come. So with that, any questions? Anybody want to join? Who's joining? Calista wants to join. Everybody say hi to Calista. This was her, her brainchild as well. Um, yeah, so it, it, everybody who's out there watching virtually, go out there, hit the join button. Let's see what we get. <laughs> Any questions? No? You have one. Go ahead. What are your thoughts on the influences of diversity in hardware? What are my thoughts on the influences of diversity in hardware? I think the, what do you think the most impactful things will be? What do you think is really causing the diversity? So what's, what's causing the lack of diversity? What's causing us to do the alliance? Or the lack of diversity? Yes, you know, we, I don't know. And that's something that, um, I mean, we, we all, I have some ideas and I'll share some ideas on that. I don't know for certain what is causing that. And that's where I want to make sure we get that kind of expertise in the organization, in this alliance. You know, people who do know <laughs> and how to solve it. Um, I think some of it is coming from student programs. Uh, it, it's coming, you know, in the elementary, high school type age groups where uh, the, not everybody has access to, um, to work on open source hardware. So one of the ideas I have for RISC V Summit is um, one of our members, I haven't asked them yet, so James, if you're listening, I'm going to be asking. One of our members has a Doctor Who hi-fi board targeted to kids. And so I was thinking of a Zoom meeting, having somebody facilitate a Zoom meeting and have a bunch of kids build, build out this core, this board, and make the lights blink, for example. So I think that's one, one, one area. Uh, but other than that, thank you. Other than that, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Do you have any ideas? Oh, go ahead, Calista. <laughs> so where we can speak that in diversity. Hey, 
Hey, Calista, hold that. Hey, what? Let me go ahead and repeat for the streaming audience, and then we'll keep going because I can only remember so much at once. <laughs> um, as Callista was mentioning, she feels that people ca people aspire to to be with and see people that look like them, and basically in a nutshell, correct? Did I get all that? And. If they say something that resonates with you. Yeah, whether like where you're from, yeah, exactly. Whether you all like dogs, you, you like to be with people that are like you. And then you were going to go on. So I think in a diversity alliance, that's where we have opportunity to build that welcoming environment and park people who have that kind of that connection with others in the community to draw them in. And that is, thank you, Calista. That's exactly what we want to do, is this welcoming environment, introduce people to, uh, to others in the community. Networking is a big area, so that when you come to a conference such as this, you, know, you may not identify with any one person, because there are no other Labrador lovers, maybe. Um, but you know other people, and you start building those relationships and connections, so you do feel welcome. Thank you. Good question. You going to join? You want to help? Well, um, that raises um, the question of what I, as a white man, can do to help. Yep. Even just by speaking here, I'm kind of intruding and you know, absorbing your work on people are not white men. Yeah. Uh, so the comment from the audience, like, what can this individual as a white man do to help? And we have Rob Mains. Uh, is uh, on this committee with us from Chips Alliance. He's one of them who started that. He, I've actually charged him with the allies. Uh, allies. Let's build a really strong ally program because this isn't all about just having any one type of person that is not a white male, for example, because that's not solving the problem. But how do we help you be an ally? You know, what are some tools? What are some actions that allies can do to support? women and the underrepresented individuals in their careers and their efforts. So more coming on that. Rob, I, I want to get Rob working on that, or have Rob continue his work on that. Yes? Are you intercepting any of these people, let's say, in their college uh, era and trying to be a positive influence mm -hmm. Yes, so the question that was, are we accepting anybody in their college age and helping them with their um, decisions that they're trying to make? And coming back, because you know you popped on in, which is fine. You're probably coming from Drew's talk. Uh, yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, so one of our targets is students, yeah, and looking at student programs. Um, Danny, who is not in this session, he's on our marketing committees. They do a lot of work with student programs in college and providing hardware. So uh, he's going to help us with the student targets and putting together. So the goal would be for Danny to put together like what has worked in the organization that he's working in and then offer this out to other people who want to, to put together student programs in their geography. So great, great question. Mm -hmm. uh, architecture type thing, but the risk five stuff that's, that's kind of anchored has resulted in a lot of things that are available you know, globally around the world as well. And part of the work I'm doing, I'm uh, uh, counsel for, uh, for EDA, CETA, right, I believe, trying to make a connection with the academic community, the, the professors, but also the students, and have them be more present in open source Mm -hmm. We figure if we can help them build names, connect them with uh, internship opportunities, that we might be able to have more seasoned uh, uh, individuals coming out that might be better prepared to even accept you know, uh, jobs or positions that are just a follow-on to their academic career. 
Absolutely. And um, he, I forgot your name. Huh? Ben. ben. It, Dennis. 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 I'm sorry, Dennis. So Dennis from IEEE is talking about EDA programs. Yeah. Oh, right. I talked to you yesterday. This is my memory, people. Um, <laughs> but Dennis is talking about ED. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah, I remember. I was trying to upsell you. Anyway, uh, yeah, Dennis from um, Siemens, and he's part of IEEE, was talking about EDA programs for students. And so I definitely want to talk with you about that and have you and Danny working together. Like, how can we collaborate? Because you're right, it's not about building another RISC-V chip or building an extension. It's about how, how can you get your, people get their hands on hardware and use it and learn to love it. So. Any other questions? I just have a comment on what Dennis was saying. Yeah. So what you're doing is boosting individuals one at a time as interns, as engaging, reaching out and engaging one at a time, which is a fantastic way to bring momentum. And I think something that often gets lost when you start to do things at scale or in mass, we're going to roll the dice to a whole program Because the eminence that you build as a technologist, as an engineer, the eminence you build can be as an individual. And honoring that individual is really important to diversity because they may not be, you know, the laboratory loving person of XYZ attributes, yada, yada, yada. Every single one is an individual. And that is part of the diversity message that you. Mm -hmm. The one start right now is that we've got 35 uh, student chapters around the world, and our focus is Asia, India, and China, because it's kind of an underserved uh, technology area, so that they're usually at a more disadvantage to you know, tackle uh, the, the toughest next world design assignment. So we're kind of focused at that moment right there. Yeah. So Calissa was mentioning the one-on-one, -on -one, keep the one-on-one, -on -one, and you have the student chapter. So Dennis, yeah, definitely, Danny's, Danny has a RISC V t-shirt on, so, and I'll make sure I introduce. Yeah. yeah, so I'd love for you two to start talking and, and, you know, see if we can be doing some student programs, roll those out sooner rather than later. So I'm excited. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. People on TV, you get to go get a long break. <laughs>